Welcome to the You Are a Philanthropist podcast. This is episode 11, and today we're talking with Audrey Blankenship and her mother, Erin Blankenship. Audrey is nine years old, and she enjoys giving her birthday gifts as donations and has an annual art show. Her mother is the co-chair of a fully remote elementary school in Acton, Boxborough, and has years of volunteer service, including in a maternity ward and summer camp. She is also a teacher. You are the kind of person who wants to improve the lives of others, but you need to take pride in your everyday actions. You are a philanthropist, believes that every act of goodwill deserves to be recognized as philanthropy. Each individual action you take impacts another's life. Believe that what you do makes a difference. So call yourself a philanthropist and start a ripple effect of generosity that boomerangs back to you. Go to youarephilanthropist.com forward slash shop. Style your outside to match your inside. Choose a t-shirt, hoodie, or bag to show how much you love giving to others. That's youarephilanthropist.com forward slash shop. Welcome to the You Are a Philanthropist podcast with Jen Klein, a certified fundraising executive and philanthropic entrepreneur. This show is dedicated to empowering and inspiring you to make a difference in your community and our world. Jen believes all acts of kindness matter, and this show is designed to help you take pride in your everyday actions of improving the lives of others and making a change in the world. Now, here's Jen. Welcome to the show. Um, hi. I'm so glad you're here, Audrey. You're my first guest who is a young child. And can you tell me a little bit about who you are? <laughs> um, well, I'm nine years old, like you said. And in third grade, I love to do art, science, and math. And I love to write books. I also like to put on art shows, like make make stuff, find stuff in the woods, like find feathers, and then make art and stuff, and take a bench that we have, and chairs, and just put them out on the streets, and not necessarily yell, just like, really, that just makes me nervous, actually, just standing there, hoping that somebody will spot me, and like, hope that somebody likes some of my stuff. Um, I'm going to do what after COVID is over. Um, I've done a lot of art so far. Also, um, in it, there's going to be a cooking, because I also love to cook completely, and, um... And all the pros. Oh, reading. Yeah, I love, love reading, and also I love HP. HP is awesome, if you ask me. Oh, what's um, HP? Oh, Harry Potter, of course. Yeah, you mean. Harry Potter. It sounds like you're a very artistic girl. This must come very naturally to you. Uh... Is this is this a talent of your mom's too? Where do you think you got your artistry from? I guess I just kind of liked it and w- kept going with it. Really, like I, I like I just started to like it, and then I went on and on and on, and I got better and better and better. And then because I liked it, I just kept doing it. And the more you do it, I mean, the better you get. Really, so it just kind of good. And now because I like it so much, you know. Excellent. How many years have you been doing your art show? Too, I think I've only done it twice. And so you weren't able to do it this year because of COVID. Is that right? Uh, though next time we do it, this will be my second, you know. Uh-huh. And what types of things do you make? Well, so often drawings. I'm making a kitchen. Um, well, I also, um, I also made a... Oh, I, I just want to talk about one of my drawings that I'm really proud of. Is that okay? Excellent. Um, well, so basically, it, I'm just, it's a, just a drawing of a dress, though. Even though it's just a drawing of a red dress, it's really cool because I, like, ripped up red paper and glued it to it so the dress would be fluffy. Ooh, um, it, it's, like, really cool. Excellent. And so where does the money that you raise from your charity go to? Usually some of the world's biggest disasters like tornadoes, floods, stuff like that. Wow. So you really send it to some of the neediest people in the world who really need help. 
Um, I just feel like that's sort of the most important stuff because it's the world's biggest disasters. I mean, it doesn't have the weird, uh, the weird name for that for for nothing, does it? Yes. And do you ever think about how lucky of a little girl you are to be in your nice, safe home and with wonderful parents and a, a safe house? Um, actually, it's actually safe because some because of COVID. Yeah, that's I'm changed, excited. hasn't it? That's been a, a scary year. And I know you have been learning remotely this year. Are you going to go back to school next year? Yes, though um, I'm not going to go to remote, uh, be too hybrid this year, because um, we'd like to stay remote for as long as we can, basically. Mm -hmm. it was, I love remote. You do. I'm happy to hear that. You like your teacher? I want many, and she's awesome. Excellent. I'm so happy to hear that. So tell me also, your mother told me that you give uh, the birthday presents you receive to charities as well. Um, yeah, I think so. Well, what she usually does is she says, instead of, if you feel the need to give us a, me a gift, instead of a gift, could you please donate to, and we list two charities. Because again, we don't want to assume that somebody's going to give us a gift. So we're not saying give us a gift. We're saying if you feel the need, because we feel like people just give a gift because they're supposed to. And giving should be an option. It shouldn't be required. So we do research. We pick two charities that she's interested in to make it easier. And we put those links and say, if you feel the desire. So that's what she has done for most of her birthday since she was about four. We had a special experience that made her decide that she finally realized, I think she was Four, almost four, but some people don't get stuff, and that kind of changed her life. Yeah, so you've been donating a cherry for half of your life at least, haven't you? I'm nine, and I guess I was four, so I guess maybe like one year, um, more than half of my life. That's awesome. Because that, that would be five years ago about. That's right. And so tell me, what are the type of reactions that you get when people buy your artwork? Um, really, it just makes me, it makes me happy that somebody's buying it because then that money is going to go to the charities, but it makes me curious and sad because it makes me wonder what if they're just doing it because I'm a child, what if they're not doing it because they actually like it? Yes. What if somebody bought it? And they just crumbled it up and put and put it in their bag. Oh, which, made, which especially made me think they probably just don't like it. They probably were just buying it, so they'd make me happy. Oh, so they didn't realize how they didn't realize how important it was that they were buying it. That um, they realized how beautiful your artwork is, as well as the fact that it's going to a charity. But some people have come along and they've offered her more money than she asked for because they knew it was going to a charity. That's beautiful. Like, for example, um, the Alex, which is a family friend, um, one time they, it was a hawk feather. And, they, and it was only supposed to be about five, and they it was like 12. Oh, nice. And every daughter, dollar matters. That's something I've been saying on this show is that Anybody can make a difference. And that's why at nine years old, I'm very proud of you for someone who's making a difference in the world. And I'm curious how your mother, um, Erin, if you could please share how this started um, for Audrey, for your perspective about how she enjoys to be a philanthropist. Well, the, um, several years ago, I started a French play group because I felt that it was, I want her to hear the language of French. That's what my, my second language. And having lived in other countries, I know how it is to not have people around you that understand your culture. So that was sort of a meeting group. And I wanted it to be free because most in Seattle, which is where we're from, most of the conversation groups wouldn't let you bring children. So I created a play or a francophone play group. And then my friends and I started thinking about how a lot of the adopt a family for Christmas, it kind of gets expensive. So we decided that if we went as a group on a family, we could get a bigger family, if that makes any sense. So we all, there's five of us doing it. We agreed we wanted to get a gift for the grandmother. And then we each agreed to take one child. But we wanted to make sure all four sons, all four little boys got equal gifts. It would, as you know, as a mother, it wouldn't be fair to give one kid more. 
One of my friends said, oh, I didn't quite finish my shopping. Can you finish it for me? And I thought, ah, uh, I have two kids. It's near Christmas. So I had to bring a toddler and barely more than a toddler into basically near Christmas into a TJ Maxx to buy a gift. And Audrey saw this train set and she said, mom, we have to buy this train set. And I said, well, we want to spend X amount of money because we want all the gifts to be equal. How would you feel if, you, if your sister got a really big gift and you only got a little one? And she, she said, but I know they're going to want this, mommy, and they could share it. And I said, well, let's get the truck because this truck will equal and then all the boys will equal. And she said, but mommy, they need this. And I said, well, do you want to give one of your Christmas presents to buy this for them? And she said, oh, I know I'm going to get plenty of gifts and I think that they're going to like this. So yes, mommy, I'm going to give up one of my gifts because I have stuff and I'm concerned that these, that these boys aren't going to have much. So she actually, she had just turned three or just turned four. And I thought it'd be a nightmare to go into a shopping store. And she said, I think they need this. I think it makes a difference. Yes. I'll give up a gift. That's and amazing. That was really where it started. Like I said, we're not flashy about it, but I always wanted them to be aware of what we do and why we do it. You know, when she was little. I barely remember it, by the way. But when she was little, instead of sitting there saying we didn't necessarily give, I'd say, people like to look at you. You're a cute little girl. Nobody can touch you, but a smile costs you nothing. And it might make a difference. Maybe a lonely elderly person, maybe a wave at somebody else. It could make a difference. It could brighten somebody's day. And that was kind of what I told the kids. Always feel safe and comfortable. But why not smile? Somebody says hi to you. It doesn't hurt and it could make all the difference to somebody else. So that was kind of where I started. You know, kindness counts. Even the littlest thing can matter. That's so cool because our last guest, uh, Paul Ott, was saying in his episode, he's a 70-year-old man, and he also talks about the importance of smiling. And he started at a very young age, too. And he's met so many friends from different walks of life because he just starts a conversation with anybody and everybody. Sounds like us. (laughs) That's beautiful. And so that's another way we can be philanthropists is giving to charity, giving our time, um, making things for other people, doing, giving a smile. I love that at such a young age, you're already incorporating that into your lifestyle. Erin, how did this get started for you? Um, For me, ever since I was little, my mom has, and my grandma and my aunts, we've always adopted a family. I said, we're not religious. So it's just been people need. Sometimes we'd find those giving trees. Sometimes one of my aunts and we would just say, let's pick a family. Again, we'd always go for a bigger family, usually a single mom or whatever it was, and say, if we all donate, we can. Because so many people, I think now a lot of places say it's like you have to give at least $25. And that may not seem like a lot, but it could be. So we said, you know, with enough adults, if we just adopted a family and we all helped out, we could get a bigger family. Because for me, when I was little, I, we were, I was on a vacation and I saw people that I didn't understand why are they sitting out in the cold. And people kind of explained it to me. I was quite little, but then we started realizing that we may not have a lot, but we have something. And there's, you know, I wish it wasn't just Christmas. I wish people gave you around. But to me, if it reminds you and it does something, you do that. So it's always been, my mom's always just sort of not made a big deal, but she said, let's donate to this or that. And one of the things I always remember, she said, People need the essentials. She said, but what's really important, she says, when I, I always buy pretty underpants because that's such a basics that people never think about, but everybody deserves just to have a little, a little nice panty. And this is for kids, you know, like it sounds silly, but that little something that makes you feel proud, that little special secret, something that nobody sees, but that little frill that maybe your parents don't have the money to waste, quote unquote, waste on, but that matters to you. So that's sort of where mine started again, just always helping out. And then from there, I think I took it to anytime people needed help with something, I'd accidentally volunteer. And that's how I've stumbled into PTSO leadership and all this has been, but it needs to happen. <laughs> you know, and that's how she is too, you know. Well, they don't ha- I need help with Cub Scouts because they need help. It has to happen, you know. It's just the giving. Audrey, is your mom your greatest inspiration? Are there other people, maybe your grandma or your great aunt, so you can think of that really inspire you? Sometimes my dad, actually, because he's a scientist and he helps because he's a drug scientist. Excellent. And so you know that the that what he's doing for work is really important for society and keeping people healthy. Is that right? Uh-huh. Though he's not doing a coronavirus, he's doing other stuff. 
though um, that stuff is important too, obviously. Excellent. Is your dad home right now too because of COVID? Yeah, he's working from home. So you get lots of family time. That's nice. And so we're going to take a commercial break and we're going to come back and hear from Audrey and Erin some more about their volunteerism. Thank you. We'll be right back. This year, I lost weight through a nutrition program called Arbonne International. Arbonne uses products that are good for your body and eliminate 2,000 toxins. They have nutrition and skin care products to help your body feel the best. More importantly, why I'm talking with you about this today is because they're just certified B Corp, which means they put people, planet, and purpose over profit. They donate and created a foundation called the Flourish Foundation that gives to children's mental health programs all over the world. If you'd like to hear more about Arbonne and how it can help you feel your best self and you can feel good about supporting, go to jenkleinphilia.com. That's J-E-N-N-K-L-E-I-N. P-H-I-L-I-A dot com. Okay, we're back and we're talking to Audrey, who's nine, and her mom, Erin, who has guided her daughter into philanthropy at such a young age. And Audrey, I'd like to hear again from you about what you do um, to incorporate philanthropy into your life. Is this something that you're always thinking about or you do it from time to time? Um, I think it's sort of always in your mind. I mean, ever since you're yeah. little, remember when you used to bring gifts to the grocery store? Yeah. Tell me about that. What did you used to bring to the grocery store? Um, every time at Christmas, I would bring these um, – like little like reindeer ornaments for Christmas. Um, they're like just Rudolph ornaments that I thought looked that I, I just thought looked cool. That yeah. you liked making. That I just like making. Yeah, you, I actually made them. You made reindeer ornaments. <laughs> and I would give them to all my friends and people who worked at the grocery store. Like everybody that I saw basically. Though so that kind of started out one time. So yeah, usually I did all my friends really. Now, was this a big store or was this a, a small store? Um, it had about 300 employees. Yeah. Wow. So you were making a lot of reindeer ornaments, weren't you? Yes, you know, she meant to give them to her friends, but then she said, well, it'll be rude to give to this person, not that person. So then she'd give that, she'd give away the one she made for her friends, but then she'd like, well, I have to go home and make more. So it ended up being about 300. Wow, you're a very generous little girl and very and one time kind. I cried happy tears. Yeah. Oh, I bet. I bet because it's not every day that children think to be so kind and go out of their way, especially for adults doing hard work. That was very impressive. How old were you when you did that? Four, three, two. No, we did it. Yeah, you were four. We did it for four and five, and then we moved here. But we sent ornaments. The the year we moved to Massachusetts, we still sent some, not 300, but we sent some ornaments back home to our our grocery store. That is so nice. And mom, how did you get that idea? Or maybe it wasn't even your idea. Maybe it was Audrey's idea. It was actually Audrey's idea. We went, when we had a grocery store that we would go and visit, again, it was within walking distance, and I had both my children in the same house. I mean, so we lived in the same house. So when you have a baby, you're like, well, I need to get out of the house. And uh, we would just go down the go down the street to the grocery store, and people were, you know, we're, we started making friends that way. And then we felt we had to do like, oh, I have to give them a gift. And that's how it started. Well, again, we don't need to buy them something something special. Excellent. Actually, I thought it was your idea, Mommy. No, that was you. And well, same- I clearly, well, I clearly did not know that. Yep, you really? wanted to make something special for Shane and Frank, and that's how it started. And then the next year, we recruited your little sister to help, you know. Sounds like you are a very humble little girl. She put the Rudolph's nose on the eyeball. Exactly, but it was a handmade original, and it was lovely. <laughs> I think I, I think I remember her doing something like that. Tell or me I about think it would be one of the horrors on her nose. Doesn't matter, honey. It was a beautiful, creative idea. That's I don't different. know. 
So tell me what your sister does too for charity work. E- well, I don't actually remember at the second. I don't really pay attention. One of the big things that her little sister does is she really, really got excited about the Black Lives Matter situation. So she yeah, wanted really she wanted to come with me. We hold signs. Again, we don't call it's just for my we don't have to fight anything here and act in a theoretically not too bad but to say we support you we see you and we care about you she wanted to she wanted to design her own sign and she said mommy can i come with you this week when you go do it she wants to come and she stands out there for an hour with her sign making sure that she gets the attention because a seven-year-old little girl with her big beautiful rainbow sign is going to get attention and that's that's what she wants she wants people to feel loved and safe that's what she said i want everybody to know that they matter so i have to have my little sign It's so wonderful because I remember very vividly going by a Black Lives Matter protest and my son, who was four at the time, said, Mommy, what are they doing? And I said, they're just telling people that everybody should be loved. And And it's a very simple concept. Yeah. I mean, and that's the thing. When we would look and we sit there, I feel funny saying, you know, we're holding our signs because Yes, there's racism everywhere, but my friends around the world or around the country, they're actually risking their safety when they're going and holding their signs. It's dangerous. And we're somewhat safe holding our signs. But the first time I went, I actually had a, um, a woman drive by and, and she said, oh, merci, merci, and started crying. And I thought, I believe she was probably Haitian. But again, it's not so much because the police, you know, whatever, it's saying, you that are here, I see you. We're, you know, we send our love. Excellent. And when we had we had some local people in my town get targeted toward racism, and my children sent them videos saying, "You know, we love you. You're good. We care." Oh my gosh! That's because so- it I got a thank you letter. Yeah, because because we care, and so again, we we don't claim there's no racism. We claim that we are not in danger by having by holding these signs. So I thought first I thought it was stupid, and then I thought no, it matters. There was a little boy there. He had a little sign, and, he, and his sign says. Black lives matter. My life matters. And it broke my heart because this little boy wasn't even, a, he wasn't, he wasn't even in kindergarten yet. And he was there with his sign because we don't think about it. We have the luxury of holding our sign, but for this man and his little boy, it wasn't a luxury for them. It was. And I think Amelia seeing that there were little kids and that it would affect them made a difference. I mean, for us, we've always had friends that have different skin colors, different languages, different religions, so they didn't really think about it. And they said, wait, wait a minute, somebody's not okay with this? Yeah. So I think it was kind of an interesting, it's like, it's not a new topic, but it was also a strange topic because for them, well, I've got people all different color, it, you know, it was, which, you know, when you say this, what do you mean by that? You know, because of course <laughs> all lives matter. So it's kind of bittersweet, but she's like, oh, not on my watch. So the little one is very like loud and proud. And then this, and then Audrey, Audrey, Audrey has her art all year. Right now we're doing our art. We can't have our art show, but she's collecting her art up. And when the time comes, she will be ready. So she's, okay. she collects up, she does drawings. And then if there's a Valentine's Day um, senior citizen event, or there's a holiday thing, any chance she gets, she's already kind of got some stuff and then she makes new stuff. But all year she's got stuff and she's waiting to brighten lives with it. That's amazing. And mom, do you think she'll be an artist one day or does she have other um, things that she enjoys doing? She really loves science and she really loves animals. So maybe she'll be a veterinarian. What I, I love o- animals a lot. I, I mean, a lot, a lot, a lot. In fact, I'm going to have a farm when I grow up. Beautiful. So basically, like I do photography, but that's not my career. I'm a teacher by profession. What I tell her is do something that you love, but your art, I think, is something you keep you keep for you because once you make that your profession, people start changing it. You, you, if you have to get paid for it, they tell you how they want it. And I would prefer, I think art is for you. So I had told her that if she wants to do it, that's great, but find something else that you love. She loves science. She loves animals and art can be a part of it. And there's no reason it should ever go away, but I feel like anything else would be doing it for others, just like charity. I'm going to hold this check out and smile on a hand to somebody. That's, I mean, I'm not a politician, so do what you love for you, whatever feeds your soul. So if art feeds your soul, do it. That's but beautiful. It, but she has so many other things that she loves. She is so kind and so sweet and so amazing. Whether or not she ends up being an artist or going into whatever field, I know she'll be changing the world by her smiles, by her kindness, 
by her really wanting <laughs> wanting to make a difference little by little. You know, kindness counts. And she was in, I think it was in kindergarten, they have you do your little poster of the week and it says, if you could have one wish, what would it be? And her wish was, I wish for everybody in the whole world to have a warm coat because it could get cold. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. And I mean, and not for me, but a lot of kids like, you know, I wish that I could have such ice cream as I wanted, that I could stay home and get snuggles from my mommy or that. And I mean, it wasn't being prompted. It was, you know, what do you want to change? You know, sometimes she'll say, I just, uh, she came home and she said, I'm so upset. I went to an assembly at school, mommy, and they were talking about Hurricane Maria. And I, I'm just very upset because we didn't do anything to help. And I said, oh, no, no, honey, you agreed. You decided for your birthday that you wanted to donate money to hurricane relief. And she's like, oh, you if I feel better now. I was feeling very selfish. So yeah. again, it's just little, little kids think, what can I do? And I always say, it doesn't have to be major you gave a note, you smiled, lonely people. But again, you, I, she knows she's going to get gifts from her grandparents. There's no way grandma and grandpa aren't going to give you gifts. But your friends, you know, we've had a few friends say, you know, can I please give her a gift? I, I, my daughter really wants something that she has for Audrey. And I believe gift, giving a gift is so exciting. Like when you find just the right gift and you give it, that is I love giving. But when, as we do so much nowadays, we are going to a party you didn't give a gift to nine-year-old Audrey. You gave a gift to nine-year-old girl. Like, if you don't, if you don't have a heart in it, and if you don't know what to give my child, I'm not being mean. There's people that need it more than we do. If you're feeling excited and your heart says, "I have to give this gift to somebody," and you're going to be excited to see them open it, I don't want to stand in your way. However, if we're doing because we have to do, there's people that need it. I mean, it sounds silly, but that's how kids can help. Actually, Donate I'm, books, collect books. I'm know? so glad you mentioned this. I, I actually wrote a blog article several years ago um, about that I'll put in the show notes about obligation and giving. Um, I really do feel like obligation restricts you from generosity. Yes, you're giving and that's generous. But when it's coming from your heart, like you said, it's even more powerful. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I, I feel like people think they have to do it. And it's like, you can tell when it's an obligation. And in this day and age, there's people that need that spend that X amount of money that you feel if you have to give me a candle because you're coming to my house for dinner, not to be mean, that's $5. I don't need a candle. You don't actually think I want the candle. You're being polite. And I appreciate it. But that $5, that's some rice aroni. I mean, that's, you know, that's vitamins. Like, it's really funny. There's somebody begging on the street for money and such. And I went into CVS and they had kids and I gave them sunblock. I mean, I gave them, I said, here's some sunblock, here's some vitamins, here's some diapers. And I even went to the dollar store because they had their kids with them begging and said, since you have to sit out in the street, here's some fun things to play with. I mean, I gave them food, I gave them stuff, but it was sort of like, okay, as long as you, I mean, again, it sounds silly, but these kids, I mean, it was hot out. And they couldn't afford to give them a sunblock. You could see these little sunburned kids. And I was like, you know, so again, it's not about being showy. It's not about having one charity you love. It's saying somebody somehow needs me. What can I do? How can we scoop in and fix the situation? Not fix it, but I guess just help. Just show you care. Just like looking people in the eye if they're begging for money. You know, if you don't have any money to give, show them respect. They're human beings. Be honest. I'm sorry. I don't have any cash on me. Except when they come and they bother my children. I'm sorry. I think it's very inappropriate to grab onto children. We had that happen when we were in Austin. Ask me. I'm an adult. But please don't. It's. I mean, it can be scary to children. Right. So there's a Again, respect. There should be respect for everybody. Whether or not they're the president of the company or they're the lolling, you know, male person. Everybody deserves respect. And I think you can judge a person not by how they treat someone they can get something from, but how you treat somebody that you don't believe you can get anything from. That's I great. think that's it. Value is not in how much money you bring home or how fancy your job is. Value is in your existence. Well, I love how you were mentioning in your previous story about how when Audrey was three years old and she said to you, no, mommy, we have to get this train set for our friend because he's really going to like it. And you listened to your daughter and you respected her opinion instead of saying, no, we're not doing that. You, you know, you're bothering me. Um, your focus really was on her heart and what her intentions were. And then every year Christmas, I don't just say, here's money. I mean, they, 
they each get to say a charity they're interested in. So Audrey might say, I like animals. And we will go on Charity Navigator and we will pick a charity. And she knows that every year one of her Christmas presents is $25 to a charity as long as she does research with me or does it on her own. That's where it goes. Every year we want to help. And that is a birthday present. They have $25 to spend on a charity that matters to them. Oh, my friend, I'm going to be copying that idea. I didn't even think about that. What a wonderful idea for... And again, I don't tell them. Like, it's funny because every year we each have our money. My husband has his charity groups. I have mine. And the girls have theirs. And my whole thing is research your own. You have to, I mean, I will help you with it. But you don't have to have the same priority, priorities that I have. Sometimes I sit there and in my head, I think, that, oh, there's so many better options than that. But at the same time, it's in her heart. Her sister and her don't pick the same charities. I don't pick the same charity. But I'm not doing it for you. Audrey has a great idea. I want to do an art show. I'll go, I'll buy her the supplies, but I'm not going to tell her how to do the art. This year for her art show, I am going to be donating things to it. And we've had a few friends that asked if they could donate. We said, as long as you don't expect a profit, because we're not keeping a profit. So this year we'll be expanding. It might even be partially online, but other kids that want to can participate. I'm donating a few things to it. And it's just to have a nice big art show and everything is suggested donations, which I think is important. Just... So I think our big thing is everything is what you can, we can't assume everybody has what we have. Even in a town like Acton, we forget that people don't have. So let's focus on suggested or if you can, as opposed to highlighting the have and the have nots. Inclusiveness, right? We include, we need to include everybody as many people as we can. Excellent. That's one of the things I've been talking about is that some people don't know where to start. And so when we come back from this break, I'm going to ask you guys, How can people get started and what your advice is? So let's be right back. Let's take a break to talk about a company that I'm passionate about, Stella and Dot. Stella and Dot creates personalized jewelry that boosts your love of life. Stella and Dot is committed to sourcing and producing jewelry and accessories in a legal, ethical, and socially responsible way. Beautify your life and buy you or your loved one a beautiful personalized piece of jewelry. Go to jenkleinfilia.com for more information. That's J-E-N-N-K-L-E-I-N-P-H-I-L-I-A.com. You are the kind of person who wants to improve the lives of others, but you need to take pride in your everyday actions. You are a philanthropist, believes that every act of goodwill deserves to be recognized as philanthropy. Each individual action you take impacts another's life. Believe that what you do makes a difference. So call yourself a philanthropist and start a ripple effect of generosity that boomerangs back to you. Go to youarephilanthropist.com forward slash shop. Style your outside to match your inside. Choose a t-shirt, hoodie, or bag to show how much you love giving to others. That's youarephilanthropist.com forward slash shop. And we're back. And we're here with Audrey, who's nine, and Erin, her mom, who's helped her be a philanthropist. But I think Erin would agree that um, her daughter has helped her be a philanthropist, too. Without a doubt. Audrey, I'd like to hear what your advice is to people who don't know how to get started with giving. Um, follow your heart. Follow your, your heart. Heart tells you that it's the right thing. Make sure it is in your mind. And if you have that, go with it. Oh, my gosh. I couldn't have put it better, Audrey. That is just beautiful. Go with what's in your heart. As long as it's not bullying somebody. (laughs) That's true. That's true. Go with the good decisions that your, that your brain comes up with. Right. Yeah. Especially if there's really, really, really good. I bet everybody has really good ideas, but for some reason they can't follow them. Follow them. (laughs) Great advice. Erin, what would you say for um, either parents who haven't thought about um, incorporating philanthropy into their children's lives or uh, adults who also don't know how to get started? As I think as a parent, 
you just do good. I mean, it sounds silly, but just let your, it's like they say, your children should witness you praising them, pretend you're not saying it to them, you're saying it near them. Let them see you doing good things. Then they'll start getting the idea, you know, you can ask them what interests them. As I said, I started saying, now that we know that there's some problems, what interests you? And I give them money toward that. Again, listen and encourage. But for little ones, an easy thing is when you go to the grocery store, buy things and you make sure your children see. Some people don't have this, so let's donate. You know, I think it sounds silly, but you're modeling it. They may not do it the same way, but make them aware that we have to give. When they were really little, I had the kids make sure that they waved back at people and smiled at people. It sounds creepy and weird, but I was partially raised by my grandparents. And so I was raised by a lot of old people and they just took joy. They just took joy in it. Last week we were at Castle Island and there was a little girl and I'm, I'm assuming she's having trouble with quarantine because she almost knocked over one of my kids just to get close and say hi to the other one because she probably doesn't have kids her age she sees. So it sounds silly, but kindness, just smile. For children, it's difficult. I know my kids and other little kids I've worked with have said, well, I can't do anything. I don't like the president or I hear all these things. I can't deal with COVID. What can you do? You can spread kindness. You can't vote in an election. Maybe you're too young to write a book or smile. Be kind. Make life easier for anybody around you. Welcome new kids into your classroom. That's kindness. Make sure everybody has a place to sit. That's philanthropy. That's from your heart. That's warming people up. When you can do that, if you're confident enough, great. If not, there's the charity bins. That's where you can start. There's the book drives. That, I mean, there's so many directed things that you can start with until you figure out how you're going to make use of it. You know, it's interesting. You bring up a good point about how important children smiling at adults, particularly um, elderly people. But there's there's more excitement when a children when a child smiles at you than when an adult is. Would you agree with that? Oh, without a doubt, people think I'm I'm weird because I'll like smile like, oh, what, are you stopping? I'm like, oh no, I was just smiling at you. I mean, it's just because that's just how I've always been is smiley and nice. And people say, we know you're not from here, but again, it's not quote unquote weird for a child to bring that joy. And we do know as time goes on that the elderly are getting more and more isolated. And so again, it's a little smile, you know, it's the little things, like I said, it means nothing or very little to you. It costs nothing and it's not a big deal to you, but it could mean the world. You don't know who's had a bad day, who's lonely, you know, things like that. It matters to other people. And as much as we're isolated from our community, it's a big thing. You know, you're having a bad day and a little kid gives you a weird smile or a cute smile or a thumbs up. It just brightens your day. It really does. It, it is something about the power of a child's smile that no one can resist. Audrey, you've got a beautiful smile. You've got a beautiful heart. I'm so thankful you shared with us today and brought your mom here to share more about how she's helped you learn the value of philanthropy. And actually, I think you've helped her learn the value of what it means to be a philanthropist. Philanthropist is a big word, isn't it? No, you're not going to answer. Is that a big word? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's so, big, but it's also little. But you think you are one? Are you a philanthropist? I don't think myself as one, actually. <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> Sorry. The, I don't actually think of myself as one. I just do it. You don't think like, so? We! Oh, so we, oh, I'm doing something kind of whatever. It, really? You're is just, it whatever? Or does it make you feel good that you're helping others? It makes me feel good. It's just I don't actually realize it, really. You're just but natural like, I'm, like, I'm just doing it, and then I'm like, oh, I'm doing something. I don't know. Oh, yeah, I'm doing something. I don't know. It's not it happens to help somebody. It's, well, why wouldn't I? Yeah. Of course I would. I, I want to share. I want to do this. Well, what do you mean? Thanks for doing that. Well, why wouldn't I do that? Because that's just, you know. Well, Erin, we didn't get to talk today about... Um, how you've supported the Acton Boxborough schools, but I can only imagine um, the impact you've had on other children um, th- through the uh, Parent Teachers Association. So I want to thank you guys for coming here today. I learned so much, particularly about the power of a smile, particularly from a child, about how philanthropy can start as as young as three years old, like you were, Audrey. And I hope that other adults and children feel as, as, um, inspired by you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Bye. For, thank you for having Thanks. me. Thanks for letting me be in this podcast. Thank you. Thank you.
Uh, bye.